All right, this is the start of my new, and correct me if I'm wrong on the pronunciation, Polito rocket mass heater. As you see, I'm starting with an old deer feeder there. And this is a old air tank that doesn't hold air anymore. Now, what it's gonna be is basically a rocket heater in the middle and we will put mass around the outside of the drum. I'm going to be making this pellet feed and I'll walk you through the building of this rocket mass heater. Okay, first off we're going to have to take the legs off and there is a feed distributor underneath we've got to take off. And inside there's some excess metal and such we got to take out. Alright. Alright, we got everything cut off. Here's the legs. I used my, my side grinder there to put a cutting blade on it and just cut through the side of the leg, cut the bolts. Got the feeder off the bottom. Got this cleaned up now It's not really necessary for me to weld all this because I'm gonna have a layer of concrete in the bottom a couple inches thick Okay insulating concrete that is with perlite and uh, Mixed with Portland cement Now I got to hammer the sides out and clean everything off And I will come back after that the inside needs cleaned up a little too all right all right, as you see, I'm not worried about taking all the paint off because the fire doesn't actually touch the outside of the barrel. Okay. But I will be taking that sticker off. Now, the lip is not the best. But it seals inside, not at the edge of the barrel, so I'll be okay. If I could find a better one, I would, but unfortunately, I can't right now. But let me finish cleaning this off and we'll get to the next step. All right, got the barrel cleaned up, got the dents uh, hammered out of it, and my air tank, I cut the end out of it. Now I'm leaving this ridge because my very top, I'm going to flatten this out. And then I'm going to be mounting clear glass on top of this. Fireproof glass. All right. I was going by a construction site and I found some two inch thick cardboard or uh, styrofoam insulation they were using. Well, it seems that where they were using it, they had two inch or two feet of waste on each sheet that they weren't using. So I was able to pick up a few pieces. These will work great for me casting this burner. So what I did was I tried a preliminary and 
extra smooth. That'll work great. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is, I am going to cut the rest of these pieces. And I will get this set up for the mold. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast this entire main body in three pieces. And that will work great. I mean, that way I can put it in, seal it, and never have to worry about it again. Because I was also able to find some high temperature refractory cement. Seems there is a glass blowing place up the road that makes furnaces and they sold me a couple bags. I will share those with you later. All right, got all my pieces cut. All right, I'll give you a quick overview here. This one is a center plate, okay? This is my bottom chamber. All right. Now, this is going to be poured upside down. So the bottom, very bottom is going to be right here. It'll be flipped over. And then the center plate will go in next. This is my top. Okay. It's going to go just like it is. I'm thinking I might turn the flip this so that it goes the other way, but matter of fact, I think I will do that. Now nothing is secured yet. All right. So, it'll basically be like that. Now, what I'm going to do is, this form I'm just going to be disposable. So after I'm done, I'll just break everything out of it. Now, in the bottom chamber, what I'm going to do is at the very back, I'm going to bring the pipe in. The exhaust pipe going to the uh, chimney. Well, I will glue all this up. Or better yet, I'll just screw it up put some screws up through. I got extra long screws. And we'll be glad to show it to you. And my buddy. <laughs> before we get too far ahead of ourselves this is basically what it's gonna look like in here okay as you can see we got the front ash chamber this is just the void chamber I'm gonna fill it with some uh, light concrete now here's our exhaust and this is where it's coming down coming down from the uh, bell chamber now I will secure a screw through that before I finish right here is the duct coming in now it's three inches from here to here I took that and made little tabs and bent them so that when I pour the mortar in here, 
it will secure that. Now, before I tape any of this in, I gotta tape the seams right in there so that no, nothing leaks out. And then when I put the end on, I will put an extra scotch tape going around to help hold it together. Now, mind you, I have screws in the bottom, and that's in every few inches to hold everything in, but just just to be sure. All right, I'll get back to this. All right, got everything set up for. I would gladly pour it tonight, but it's getting too cold tonight. It's supposed to warm up after tomorrow. And to be quite honest, that mortar that I picked up today, refractory cement, that's too expensive to be wasting. But I love it. Everything's ready. We will gladly get to that tomorrow. Alright. Alright, this is, is the foundry mix that I'm using. It's Econocast 30. It's put out by Allied Minerals Products Incorporated out of Ohio. It is tough as hell, really. It's uh it can withstand 2000 degrees all day, every day continuously. But it can also withstand temperatures up to 3000 degrees for for short times. Now, this is a premix, which means I only add water. <laughs> and then mix it and put it in. Now on the other side of the coin, I'm gonna be mixing this outside because this is a, you do not want this dust to get into your lungs or anything like that. So I will be putting on a respirator when I'm doing this. If you get any in your eyes or anything like it, flush it out. Get it on your skin, wash it off, soap and hand, you know, soap and water. Okay? But it sets pretty quick, and we'll be using this for our mold. All right, we got the first section done, the main chamber. Now, I was using my, uh, some power equipment there, you know. I was using it as a vibrator. What I'd do is, I would place it down, run it to get the whole thing to shake to get air out. Of course, when you do that, it gets a little watery on top. I may have to just add just a little bit when I'm doing the second section here. All right. But so far, so good. All right. And I think I'm one bag will do the whole thing. All right. But we'll find out. All right, we got it all poured up. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to cover this to slow down the curing. Uh, I don't know if you've worked with concrete or mortar before, but the slower it cures, the better. And we will bust this out hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Okay, we're all tucked in. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll be unpacking. And we'll be starting to assemble. Please subscribe, and I'll have the next video out as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye.